Hello everyone. In first season of Unlimited Networks set up a solid foundation, second season fully realized the potential. I like the attention for every cast members, on top of its already stunning visual. The occasional overbearing dialogues and overly somber tone slow down the momentum a bit. But even then, this remains one of the better anime from last decade. There are a few things that it did remarkably well. One of them is using cliche anime protagonists, but in a good way with Emiya Shiro. I usually don't like the young boy with lofty aspirations stereotype. I wasn't that fond of him in original standard as well. But there's just different vibe about him here. A little annoying, I gotta say. And then we see the whole picture when he clashes with Archer. Spoiler warning, just in case. Archer is Shiro from the future after he died and became heroic spirit, who came back to hunt his past self like Bruce Willis on Looper, because he had regret of what he became. It's rare that a series would call out its own main character for his naivety and misplaced optimism. Honestly, it's refreshing. Most anime would just be complacent about unrealistic heroic ideal almost to the point of tone deaf. You see some MC just shout catch praise until it becomes meaningless. But Blade Works made Zero face the music. This also gives more layers to the dynamic between the main cast. Saber and Rin had significant involvement with either the past or future self of Zero. They can see that each one has a point, and they sympathize with both of them. I really like this group. It's more than just your usual fantasy animation in group. There is deeper understanding and connection between them. The other supporting cast also have their moments. Ilya and Caster have quite the backstories. Now, I've seen various titles from the Fate series, even those after the Blade Works. So this is also a retrospect. Not all masters and servants are created equal. Some kind of suck. It could be for various reasons. Maybe not enough time to develop, or the synergy just isn't there. This is unfortunate, but consider the nature of so many pairings, it's understandable. Still, I appreciate the limelight for Caster and Ilya. The first season invests a lot on Caster, admittedly more than she needed, but she eventually signed here. For Ilya, the series is pretty economic about her story. I prefer giving her a bit more time, maybe one more episode, although I can see that it can become too somber. Both of them contribute in their own ways. Still, it wasn't a smooth sailing till the end. Sometimes the dialogue can be overwhelming. At times, the series went into prolonged musing with poetic words. It really wanted to hammer this self-discovery or acceptance. Especially when Archer vs. Zero. As much as I like their art, it was rather preachy and gloomy. Another issue is the exposition regarding the Holy Grail and its convoluted mechanics. I know this boils down to magic, but almost everyone has their own scheme, some way to break or bend the rules. The grail itself, the fundamental rule, can be manipulated by Gilgamesh or many others. Or there's a certain power, some noble phantasm that just counters certain things or effective in certain situations. I can suspend this belief for a couple of times, but admittedly, the series is quite liberal on using the plot contrivance. Towards the end, it used one particular cliché narrative, which is not really all that bad, but tiresome and a bad peeves of mine. It's the almighty being or villain with purging the world as the motive. I don't know why movie, anime, or TV series always has this trope. The human has shown massive hubris, so they must be erased. How generic is that? Say what you will about Shinji, he's awfully wicked and cowardice. But his motive is simple, he wants Rin, perfectly reasonable. You don't need a grand motivation to sell a villain. All of these might sound like a nitpick, and honestly they are nothing major. But these little things hamper the series from being a real all-time great. Don't get me wrong, it's still an impressive series. We've seen so many big titles and a franchise rising in quality these few years. But I believe Unlimited Bad Works is still one of the best from last decade. The icing on the cake is the opening Brave Shine by Imer. She has the perfect voice for this franchise. 
is like green mint, sweet but strong, with a little bit of virility for that epic feel. And of course, the animation is just that super. Even compared to its sister that came after, Apokripa and Grand Order. I have rewatched them recently and Bladeworks still holds its own. And I have no doubt it will remain a stellar example of anime for more years to come. I will give it an 8 out of 10. This is one of the titles you should experience, if not just to see what's the hype all about. And once you do, you'll be hard pressed not to enjoy the unlimited fireworks. That's it, thank you for watching. Please leave a like and comment, consider subscribing and share with your friends. I make 3 videos every week. Have a nice day and I'll see you in the next one.